Well, good morning and welcome back to the channel, boat lovers. It is another perfect morning for taking Millie for a stroll. So I'm doing that before I get to work in the boat shed. For those of you who might be new to the channel, I am building Dragonfly, a 53 foot or 16 meter flat bottom wooden river boat. I designed her specifically for the inland and sheltered waters of the Murray River here in South Australia. And she's designed to have a very shallow draft of about six to eight inches. So that's why she's a flat bottom vessel. But uh, the weather's been very kind to us. We had a hot weekend, but not too hot to be working in the shed. And for the last two days, we've had quite cool weather with a bit of rain. So it's settled down all the dust and cooled things down very nicely to be working inside a shed. So stick around and Millie the Wonder Dog and I will show you what sort of progress we have made this week in the boat shed. Come on Millie. Good girl. Off to the shed this morning Millie. Okay folks, a little demonstration of a particular technique for gluing T-piece sections together. Probably quite familiar with gluing pieces like this where we wet out all of the end grain, put that on there and then run our fillets down each side. And that's a really good method. But another method which I'm going to be doing for all the honeycombing is where we put a taper on this edge, like this. If you can see that chamfer there. And then that goes on like that. I tack it in place. Of course, that's exposing all that end grain here and here. is actually a lot more surface area than the bottom of that. So once that's tacked in place, for wetting out the end grain, it's just a matter of running the brush along each side of the epoxy and then putting a decent fillet in. That's actually a lot stronger joint than that. So this is the method I'm going to be using for all the honeycomb sections along the hull. I've started with one piece here. They'll be going into place, being wetted out, and fillets in place. To make the chamfer, the quickest and easiest way is simply with the orbital sander with the 40 grit on there. I hold a piece of plywood on the edge of the bench, run this over both sides, and that does quite a quick job. So that's what I'm doing this afternoon. All right, let's get to it. First, I have to notch out corners and then I'll be then I'll be putting the chamfer on so I end up with a piece like that. Okay, let's go.
Alrighty-o folks, well that's lunch out of the way. Now I've got all these frames in place, at least halfway down towards the back of the hull. Um, I'm going to do my wetting out and filleting. All these have got the chamfered edges and I've used a pin gun to hold them in place and then I've checked that everything's level and straight and uh, now I'm going to wet them out and glue them. I'll just give you a closer look. There we go. So coming in and see how the frames are. The chamfered edges along there. Now I'll run a nice thick fillet around all of those and let them dry. Using the pin gun is a great way just to hold the plywood in place. You can get stainless steel pins if you want to do that. Some people call them brad guns or a finishing gun. With these I'm just using 32mm pins and uh, just put a couple of pins in each piece to hold it in place while we do the gluing. Okay, let's get this gluing done. Well, good morning again, boat lovers. I'm up bright and early, about 7.30 this morning. Yesterday I did quite well with the filleting of the honeycomb section, and I'll show you a little bit of how that went. It's all dry this morning, so I can continue on. It's a bit slower than what I expected, but I found that initially I was just using the filleting spatula and a container, and I found that a little bit slow, so I went and got some freezer bags, some clip lock freezer bags, which are larger than the sandwich bags I normally use for the gluing. So I've been mixing the glue up in a container and then putting that into the freezer bags 
a bit like you would with a piping bag and cut the little corner off of the bag and then make the fillets with that and that's proved to be a lot quicker so I think I'll probably achieve quite a lot today but anyway I'll show you how much I got done yesterday and what the the finished product looks like so to speak okay here we go Hopefully you can see what we've done there. Very big fillets, but I want this to be a super strong section. They're not as neat as I would usually do, but they're going to be completely enclosed and never seen, so it doesn't really matter. I am being a little bit neater with the filleting of the section that runs down the centre, because that will have some inspection hatches, and from time to time, We'll be looking in there or we may even use some of those compartments down the center for storage of you know perhaps some foodstuffs um, tins bottles that sort of thing i'll show you those ones so there we go much neater they'll get a bit of a sand and then i'll wet out all the bare plywood as well before the flooring goes on so as it's all sealed properly to make sure there's no potential of condensation intrusion into the timber or anything like that. So this morning I'm just going to be mixing up glue and filleting probably right through to lunchtime and hopefully I'll get this section finished by then and that'll be it for me today. I'll leave it to dry until tomorrow and then repeat the process down towards the back of the boat. Okay folks, time to start filleting. Okay, just about to do some wetting out before I put these last lot of fillets in. The main thing is to wet out the end grain to get really good contact there. That's all wetted out. Now I'll get some filleting done. I'm using these freezer bags because I've got a fairly large mix. So I'm mixing up two lots of a 300 mix, 300 in one of these bowls. And I'm using the little paint stirrer on the drill to mix that. And I'm pouring it into the bag and using that as my squeegee bag. That seems to be working quite well. I will do my best not to get glue on the camera and show you what I'm up to. Got a clean pair of gloves. So at this stage, I should be able to turn the camera on and off without getting glue on the screen like I did the first time I used it. All right. Starting with a clean mixing bowl. You do a 300 of resin and a 60 of hardener because it's a 5 to 1. Being a warm day, the resin's pouring out quite quickly. It was cool this morning, but it's warmed up now. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so no need for the air compressor on here. The glue's coming out beautifully, nearly there. 70, 80, 90. There we go, 300. Slide that across to get my 60 of hardener. And 
nearly there. 57. 60, there we go. Right, so there's our mix there. Get my glue powder into that. my foot against this bowl just to stop it from spinning around you give it a good mix so much quicker than doing it by hand it does a very thorough job my mix and now I'll just trail that into the plastic bag I've also been using for doing my fillets I bought one of these squeegees and then I reshaped it like that so I've got a larger radius around here and a sharper radius here and just a little bit more than the right angle there allows me to get into the corners and fill it. It has some advantages over the spatula because it takes off all the side leftover stuff as well. So I don't have to run along and follow with the uh, with the spatula. So made that this morning and it's proving to be, or yesterday I should say, and it's uh, worth its weight in gold. <laughs> so now I've got my freezer bag sitting in the bowl. Nice, gooey, oozy glue mix. Firm enough to hold position when I make the fillets, but gooey enough to have a really good penetration and also easy to work with. So I'll just do another mix now, put them both into that bag. That's in there. I'll just make up our next one. big bag of glue mix. Right, I have my bowl for the excess, my super duper yellow squeegee spatula there and my steel spatula, my bag of glue with the corner cut off, ready to do these fillets. Bag a bit of a shape, get things in the right spot, and off we go. Oh yes, that's a good consistency, easy to work with. Anything that I miss in these top joints here will get filled up when I'm doing the floor. So, because when I put the floor on, this gets the sand over the top to take off any 
dry glue residue and then a nice gooey fillet after wetting out along all the joins and then the floor gets screwed down on top of that and then it becomes an extremely strong structure even when I even when I built the model once I put this sort of framing in the model which I did as I went along I couldn't even bend the cardboard after I've, I've done this honeycombing process so I'm pretty pleased with it In my last boat build in Gargoyle, a boat that you would have seen in one of the earlier videos, I didn't really use fillets, I used framing. So I was screwing my framework to the floor and to the plywood. So I didn't really use a lot of epoxy. This time around, I've decided to do fillets instead. It does use a lot of glue, but it's Pretty quick and easy, so I guess both ways work really well. It's just a matter of personal preference. If you're speaking to somebody in the glue shop, in the epoxy shop, they'll say use big fillets. If you're speaking to somebody in the timber yard, they'll say run framing everywhere. So at the end of the day, it's, it's a personal choice. Ooh. Mm -hmm.